Hey guys, what's going on? I said I would do a little video, short, quick tutorial, look at, whatever you want to call it, of my boom room here before it goes away and we build a new one because we're very close to doing so. And usually I wouldn't show everything, but since this thing's going away soon, I figured why not? Might as well show it off to a group that would appreciate it and appreciate the work that went into it and the millions of times I changed this thing around to accommodate myself and the growing need and everything much better. So we'll get started and we'll check it all out and we'll turn you guys around here and we'll go over everything. We'll start with the door. Well, before we get started, uh, for those who missed it, this is a 20 foot sink container and we left the outside doors intact and our door here is built just inside that. So you have to get through the outside doors and into the security code door right here as well. And we have a window for shooting out of on the end and it is covered with a large steel door that folds up and locks from the inside. Everything's tied in my security system and it is viewed by cameras outside and we have fire alarms and all that good stuff and fire putting out devices. I don't know if you'd really call that an extinguisher. It's kind of like a, oh shit, we're going to burn down so we better put it out real fast. But in my personal opinion, beyond that, if you can't get it out with that, you should probably just leave the damn rip. So let's go over it real fast and I'll show you all every little thing about it and that'll be it. And we'll start with our door here. We put all our little stickers and all that whatnot on it. We got some bullet signs so we can get BCs from all that kind of good stuff. Trying to update them every year. Got a few patches, a few uh, group shot and all that good stuff. And we'll go over here to the shooting bench. Before we go there, if you guys don't have these ammo racks from Case Guard for the smaller stuff, they're pretty nifty. And I'll probably be getting more. That's a lot of my varmint ammo that I have stored over here. This is where I like to tinker with guns, mount scopes, and all kinds of stuff like that. All the more expensive tools are down there in that toolbox. The rest of it is just hand tools and crap like that. And we just have some shelves for storage. Getting into, before we get to reloading, I got a little bench here for my vices, my barrel vices and other vices and stuff. They just quickly bolt on right here. And it works great. A buddy of mine built that for me. So moving on into the, when we load all our ammo, it's just a hand-built bench out of two by fours and plywood. And like I said, we put vinyl, leftover vinyl flooring on. As you can tell, we've moved some presses around. But probably my favorite thing we ever did was go with the inline fabrication mounts. If you haven't seen those, check them out. They're pretty awesome. Going to our little powder library, we try to keep a large stock of different powders because, like I said, we develop lots of different kinds of ammo, and I don't want to have to want for something. I just want to have it here. Anytime I load out of this, I'll usually buy another bottle to replace it, so I have plenty all the time. We have some more stuff for, some more powders for when we actually load and all that good stuff. We got some primers up there, lots of dyes and whatnot. Uh, right here is where we usually do load development off of the Frankfurt Arsenal until they drop her. I've had little to no issues out of that thing. I really like it a lot, and like I said, we will shoot up this window. I have a 300 yard range. Targets ranging from 25 to 300, and it makes it very ideal for developing ammo, but I live out in the country, so it's okay to do that here. And we have a couple more slots for rifles. A couple little knickknacks there and all that good stuff. Jumping back to here, organization stuff. We have die parts, extra stuff, all kinds of crap. Shell holders, neck bushings, just all kinds of stuff in there. That's where I keep it all, so it's quickly accessible. We'll jump over here before we get too far forward. A little storage here for our 22 bullets and whatnot. And then this is actually an old Napa Auto Parts counter that we added drawers to. And what's in the drawers is my bullet libraries. And then I've got, so the bottom row is my personal brass. And we'll open that crap up. It's just brass, but it's prepped, ready to be loaded. And the top is like a bullet library starting at 17 cal going up to 30 cal. And they are usually by grain as well. I just like things to be somewhat organized. We have a little mini fridge down there. And then when we're actually loading, we use all the charge masters, which have been pretty good machines. No, not really that many complaints. Uh, then some more personal ammo. We've already loaded more powder, load manuals, personal load manuals. More stuff for the train, cleaning utensils and all that good crap. 
And this is where I keep my personal once fired brass and stuff like that. When it gets full, that's when I reload it. I've got a little TV up here, extra stuff on the U line or inline precision mounts and all that crap. I'm just going to mount it up there out of the way. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. We put pegboards as many places we could, a bunch of different scope rings. I do mount a bunch of scopes for people. We are running the Area 419 stuff for powder funnel. Love those things. And we run the powder pans, if you will. I don't know what, what you want to call that. That's Air 419 as well. Worth its money. And that's pretty much it. It's not nothing too crazy. Even though, yes, I spent some money on it. But I also spend a ton of time in here. So that's pretty much it. See you guys later.